How are you guys doing? Today is Wednesday, May 19th, 2021, out here in this quarantine. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to review the Elite matchups and performances from yesterday, Tuesday, May 18th. And of course, I'm going to provide um, a preview for everything that's going on today as we navigate through the world of sports one day at a time. Starting with the NBA, the very two, the, the very first two NBA play-in games in NBA history were played yesterday. Both of them happened in the Eastern Conference to decide who was going to get the seventh seed and who was going to compete for the eighth seed. Uh, starting off in the ninth. 10 matchup the nine seed indiana pacers hosted the 10 seed charlotte hornets uh, for a chance at the eight seed uh, for a chance to play against the winner of the se- or against the loser of the seven eight matchup and in this matchup the nine seed indiana pacers would beat the 10 seed charlotte hornets 114 to 117 after outscoring charlotte by 16 in the first and eight in the second by a combined 24 points in the first half um just to pick up a very important win for the pacers they are not exactly in the playoffs yet but they're still alive for the charlotte hornets their leading scorer was their starting small forward out of michigan state miles Bridges. He finished with 23 points and eight rebounds in 37 minutes as he shot 10 for 16 from the field and one for two from the foul line. And in his very last game of his rookie season, their elite starting point guard, LaMelo Ball, would finish with 14 points and four assists in 27 minutes as he shot four for 14 from the field, two for six from three and four for six from the foul line to cap off. What was probably in a, what would no what was definitely an amazing rookie season for the books for the Indiana Pacers their leading scorer was their starting forward O'Shea Brissett he finished with twenty three points and five rebounds uh, in thirty three minutes as he shot ten for fourteen from the field and three for six from three their starting small forward out of Creighton Doug McDermott Dougie McBuckets finished with twenty one points in twenty six minutes as he shot seven for nine from the field four for six from three and a perfect three for three from the foul line. And their all-star starting power forward, DeMontis Sabonis, out of Gonzaga, would finish with 14 points, 21 rebounds, 9 assists, and 5 turnovers in 33 minutes as he shot 7 for 15 from the field on the night. With this win, the 9-seed Indiana Pacers will face off against the loser of the 7-8 matchup, who in the who in this specific context, or in this who in this case, was the 8-seed Washington Wizards. They would go to Boston to face off against the seven seed Celtics, and the Celtics would end up beating the Wizards 118 to 110 after they went on to outscore Washington by 20 points in the second half, going into halftime trailing by two. For the Washington Wizards, their leading scorer in this matchup was their elite starting shooting guard, the NBA's runner up in the scoring title, Bradley Beal out of Florida. He finished with 22 points, nine rebounds, and six assists, as well as two blocks in 36 minutes, as he shot 10 for 25 from the field, one for six from three, and one for two from the foul line. And their elite starting point guard, Russell Westbrook out of UCLA, would finish with 20 points, 14 rebounds, five assists, three steals, and two blocks in 37 minutes. As the NBA's all time triple double king shot six for 18 from the field and a perfect eight for eight from the foul line. For the Boston Celtics in this matchup, their leading scorer would be their elite starting small forward, Jason Tatum. Uh, as in 41 minutes, he would put up 50 points, eight rebounds and four assists as well as two blocks in 41 minutes as he shot 14 for 32 from the field five for 12 from three and a perfect 17 for 17 from the foul line he is the first player in nba history of course to score 50 points in an nba play-in game and of course that may and, and that can be tacked on to his legacy forever alongside him in the starting lineup their elite starting point guard kimba walker out of yukon would finish with 21 or 29 points seven rebounds two assists and two steals in 34 minutes as he shot 10 for 24 from the field six for 14 from three and three for three from the foul line with this win the seven seed boston celtics will face off against the two seed brooklyn nets uh going into the playoffs for the eastern conference and with this loss the eight seed washington wizards will face off against the nine seed indiana pacers tomorrow to decide who's going to face off against the philadelphia 76ers in the first round of that matchup so that is currently what the nba is looking like following yesterday's matchup as in the eastern conference we're down to nine teams competing and then looking out today they're going to be the two play-in series to start off the western conference play-in matchups at 7 30 on espn it'll be a 9 10 matchup as the ninth seed Memphis Grizzlies are going to host the 10th seed San Antonio Spurs. 
And then right after that at 10 o'clock, the defending champions, the seventh seed Los Angeles Lakers, are going to host the eighth seed Golden State Warriors, who have been playing amazingly since, uh, Clay, even though Klay Thompson's been out this season, Steph Curry's maybe been able to will them there. Steph Curry, the current, or he, who just most recently won the 2000. 2021 NBA scoring title that'll probably be the most anticipated playoff matchup of the entire year but this matchup will take place at 10 and the winner will decide who will face off against the second seed Phoenix Suns and then the loser will face off against the winner between the Spurs and the Grizzlies to see if they have a chance to face off against the first seed Utah Jazz so with uh, all the NBA covered, staying within the arena, but of course shifting to the ice, getting a sense of what's going on in the NHL as the NHL regular season is still active, but of course the playoffs are going on as well. And once the regular season is done, I'm going to do a um, I'm going to do a preview for these playoff rounds. But in the meantime, in the only regular season game that happened last night between the team between two teams that didn't even qualify for the playoffs, the Vancouver Canucks were able to beat the Calgary Flames four to two, as they were able to or no, they picked up their twenty third win of the season. With this win, the Vancouver Canucks have the worst record in the North Division as they now trail the Toronto Maple Leafs by 27 points in the table. The the Flames and the Canucks have one more matchup between one another before the NHL before their NHL seasons are over as they are not able to qualify for the playoffs. Looking out to the East Division, the only matchup in the East Division between the one seed Penguins and the four seed Islanders. The one seed Penguins will be the Islanders at home as they won two to one, scoring both of their goals in the first period uh the credit goes to their goalie jari as he had 37 saves and with this win the series is now tied at one to one as i believe the new york islanders will host the next matchup jumping to the central the tampa bay lightning that currently hold the central's third best record went to miami to face off against the florida panthers in this matchup the tampa bay lightning would beat the florida panthers three to one to pick up their second win of the series they now lead this series two to nothing uh, and then last but not least, jumping out to the Western Conference matchup, the 2-3 matchup between the, as the second seed Las Vegas Golden Knights hosted the third seed Minnesota Wild. In this matchup, the Golden Knights will get the best of the Wild, winning 3-1 to one to even up the series at 1. So that is how these series are looking. Looking into what's going on tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the final regular season game of the season as the Calgary Flames are going to face off against the Canucks. Like I said, neither of these teams uh, have clinched the playoffs themselves, but the North is also going to get its playoffs started yet tomorrow too. But before that, at 6.30, it'll be an East, it'll be the Eastern Conference 2-3 matchup between as the three seed Boston Bruins are going to host the two seed Washington Capitals on NBC Sports Network. The series is currently tied at one to one as this is game three at eight o'clock. It'll be game two of the Central Division's one four matchup as the one seed Carolina Hurricanes will host the four seed Nashville Predators on CNBC as the Carolina Hurricanes currently lead the series one to nothing. Uh, Then at nine o'clock, it'll be the North first round matchup between the second seed Edmonton Oilers and the third seed Winnipeg Jets. The Oilers will host the Jets at nine o'clock on NBC Sports Network. As like I said, there's this series has not officially started yet. And then at 1030 on CNBC, it'll be the West Division's 1-4 matchup as the first seed Colorado Avalanche will host the fourth seed St. Louis Blues. This is game two and the Colorado Avalanche currently hold the advantage in this series. That is what the NHL is currently looking like. Staying within the or, or staying within the U.S., jumping out to baseball just to get a sense of what's going on in the MLB. Starting in Cincinnati, the Cincinnati Reds host the San Francisco Giants, and the Giants are able to beat the Reds four to two to pick up their and National League West leading twenty sixth win of the season for the Cincinnati Reds on the night they're or on the day. They're, the start and the loss will go to Luis Castillo, who allowed three earned runs and five innings pitch as he struck out 11. With this loss, Luis Castillo is now 1-6 as a starting pitcher for the Reds this season. Their left fielder, Jesse Winker, would end up going 2-4 for four with an RBI and a run as he had his eighth home run of the season. And their right fielder, Nick Castellanos, would go 2-3 for three with an RBI and a run as he had his 11th home run of the season. For the San Francisco Giants, their start and the win would go to Anthony Desclafini, who would allow one earned run and seven innings pitch as he struck out seven. With this win, Dace Glafini is now 4-1 as a starting pitcher for the San Francisco Giants. 
and the law or and sorry and the save would end up going to Jake McGee his 11th save of the season for the Giants as he allowed no earned runs in the one inning that he pitched in their batting lineup their shortstop Brandon Crawford will go two for four with an RBI and two runs as he had his 10th home run of the season and then their left fielder Alex Dickerson will go three for four with three RBIs and a run as he had his fourth home run of the season for San Francisco with this win the San Francisco Giants are now 26 and 16 that is currently the best record in the National League West and the best record in the National League for that for that matter as they currently sit half a game ahead of the second place San Diego Padres in the division with this loss the Cincinnati Reds are now 19 and 21 that is the fourth best record in the National League Central as they now trail the St. Louis Cardinals by four games in the division. Jumping out to Baltimore, the Baltimore Orioles host the Tampa Bay Rays. The Rays would beat the Orioles 13-6 after scoring eight runs in the first three innings. For the Orioles in this matchup, the start and the loss went to Matt Harvey, who allowed six earned runs in 1.2 innings pitches. He struck out one. With this loss, Harvey is now 3-4 and four as a starting pitcher. Uh, their right fielder, DJ Stewart, would go 2-5 for five with an RBI. And then their second baseman, who in this matchup for Baltimore was Stevie Wilkerson, would go 2-4 for four with an RBI and two runs on the day. For the Tampa Bay Rays... The start would end up going to Luis Patino. He would allow four earned runs and 3.1 innings pitches. He struck out six. The win would go to the Tampa Bay Rays first relief pitcher, Andrew Kittredge. Kittredge would go on to allow no earned runs and 1.2 innings pitches. He struck out one. With this win, Kittredge is 4-0 as a relief pitcher for Tampa Bay. Uh, their left fielder, Austin Meadows, would go two for five with three RBIs and two runs. He had his ninth home run of the season. Their second baseman, Brandon Lau, would go two for five with an RBI. Their first baseman, Yandy Diaz, would go two for five with two runs. Their third baseman, Joey Wendell, would go three for five with two runs. And then their catcher, Mike Zanino, would go two for five with four RBIs and two runs, as Mike Zanino would go on to hit his ninth and tenth home runs of the season yesterday. With this win, the Tampa Bay Rays are now 24 and 19. That is the third best record in the American League East as they now trail the Boston Red Sox by a game in that division. And with this loss, the Baltimore Orioles are now 17 and 24 as they now trail the Boston Red Sox by seven games in the division. Jumping out to Toronto or jumping out to Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Phillies hosted the Miami Marlins. And after being completely scoreless for the first six innings for the Phillies, they ended up scoring eight in the seventh and eighth inning to win and beat the Marlins eight to three. And seven of their runs came in the eighth inning. For the Miami Marlins in this matchup, the start would be given to Cody Poteet. Poteet would allow no earned runs in five innings pitches. He struck out three. The loss, however, would go to their relief pitcher, Dylan Floro. This is Floro's second blown save of the season as he allowed five earned runs in .1 inning pitched. Uh, with, with this loss, he is now 2-2 two and two as a relief pitcher this season. And in this lineup, their second baseman, Jazz Chisholm Jr., would go 2-4 for four with two RBIs and two runs as he had his fifth home run of the season. And then their third baseman, Brian Anderson, would go 2-4 for four for himself. For the Philadelphia Phillies, the start went to Zach Wheeler, who allowed no earned runs in seven innings pitches. He struck out 10 on the day. The win would go to their second relief pitcher, Archie Bradley. Bradley, Bradley would allow no earned runs in point one inning pitch as he struck out one. With this win, Bradley is 1-1 one and one as a relief pitcher for Philadelphia. Their elite right fielder, Bryce Harper, would go 2-for-5 with two RBIs. Their first baseman, Reese Hoskins, would go 2-for-5 with a run. Their third baseman, Alec Bohm, would go 2-for-5 with an RBI and a run. And then, no, and then with, and then also their center fielder, Odebel Herrera, would go two for four with a run. With this win, the Phillies are now 22 and 20. That is the second best record in the National, e National League East win percentage wise, as they now trail the New York Mets by a game in the division. With this loss, the Miami Marlins are now 18 and 23. That is the fourth best record in the National League East, as they now trail the New York Mets by four and a half games in the, in, in the division. Jumping out to Atlanta, the Atlanta Braves hosted the New York Mets, and the Mets were able to beat the Braves 4-3 to after Thomas Nito's go-ahead solo home run in the fourth to put them up um, by a run. For the Atlanta Braves in this matchup, the start went to Tucker Davidson. Tucker Davidson would allow three earned runs and six innings pitches. He struck out five on the day, and I believe that was his first start of the season. And the loss would end up going to the Braves' closer, Will Smith, who allowed one earned run and one inning pitches. He struck out two. With this loss, Will Smith is now 0-4 as the Braves' closer this year. Uh, and then their elite first baseman, the reigning National League MVP, Freddie Freeman, will go 1-3 for three with an RBI and a run as he would hit his 12th home run of the season yesterday. For the New York Mets, 
The start would be given to Miguel Castro, who only pitched one inning and allowed no earned runs. The law or the win, however, would go to their penultimate relief pitcher, Juris Familia. Juris Familia would end up allowing no earned runs in one inning pitches. He struck out one as he blew his first save, but still picked up his second one of the season. He's now 2-0 as a relief pitcher. And after allowing no earned runs in one inning pitch and striking out two, their closer, Edwin Diaz, would pick up his seventh save of the season. In their batting lineup, their elite shortstop, Francisco Lindor, would be the only player on the team that had more than one hit as he went two for one with a run. And then, of course, with Nito's super clutch home run, he went one for one with an RBI, uh, one for four with an RBI and a run. With this win, the New York Mets are now 20 and 16. Win percentage wise, they have the best record in the National League East as they now sit a game ahead of the second place Philadelphia Phillies. And with this loss, the Atlanta Braves are now 19 and 23. That is the third best record in the National League East as they now trail the New York Mets by four games in the division. Jumping out to Florida, the Tampa Bay Ray or Tampa Bay, the Toronto Blue Jays hosted the Boston Red Sox and were able to pull off an eight to nothing shutout uh, to give Hyunjin Ryu his fourth win of the season. First, for the Boston Red Sox, the start and the loss would go to Eduardo Rodriguez. He would allow five earned runs and five innings pitches. He struck out six. With this loss, he is now 5-2 and two as a starting pitcher for Boston. And then their left fielder, Alex Verdugo, would be the only player with more than one hit as he went 2-4 for four on the day. The team was only held to five hits all game, thanks to amazing Tor- uh, Toronto pitching. And of course, leading it all, the win would go to their elite starting pitcher, Hyunjin Ryu, who would allow no earned runs in seven innings pitches. He struck out seven. With this win, Hyunjin Ryu is now 4-2 and two as a starting pitcher for the Toronto Blue Jays this season. In their batting lineup, they are... Second baseman Marcus Simeon would end up going two for five with an RBI and a run on the day. Uh, and alongside him, their elite first baseman Vladimir Guerrero Jr. would go three for five with a run. Their right fielder Teoscar Hernandez would go three for five with an RBI and a run for himself. Their center their center fielder Randall Grichik would go two for five with two RBIs and two runs as he hit his seventh home run of the season yesterday. Their left fielder Lourdes Goriel Jr. would go three for five with an RBI and a run. And then their catcher Danny Jansen would go two for three with an RBI and a run for himself. With this win, the Toronto Blue Jays are now twenty three and seventeen. Win percentage wise, that is the. Th- Second best record in the American League East as they now trail these Boston Red Sox by half a game in the division. With this loss, the Boston Red Sox are 25-18. and 18. Uh, they, are, they still hold the best record in the American League East as they now sit half a game ahead of the second place Toronto Blue Jays at the moment. Jumping out to Chicago, the Chicago Cubs hosted the Washington Nationals and the Cubs were able to beat the Nationals 6-3 to three as they were able to, you know, get a good run. They were able to consistently score throughout the game. And not much, not much really to say about how they scored. But still, for the Washington Nationals, the start would go to Patrick Corbin, who allowed three earned runs and five innings pitches. He struck out four. The loss would go to the Nationals' first relief pitcher, Will Harris. Harris would go on to allow two earned runs and point two innings pitches. He struck out two. With this loss, he is 0-1 as a relief pitcher. Their elite right fielder, Juan Soto, would go two for five. And then their first baseman, Ryan Zimmerman, would go two for four with an RBI. For the Chicago Cubs, the start went to Zach Davies. Zach Davies would allow three earned runs and five innings pitches. He struck out one. The win would go to their first relief pitcher, Keegan Thompson. Keegan Thompson would go on to allow no earned runs and 1.1 innings pitches. He struck out three. And then Craig Kimber will pick up his eighth save of the season as he struck out two batters in the one inning that he pitched. Their elite closer. In their batting lineup, their catcher, Wilson Contreras, would go two for five with two RBIs on the day. Their elite right fielder, Chris Bryant, would go two for three with an RBI. Their third baseman, David Bodie, would end up going two for four with two RBIs and two runs as he had his third home run of the season. And then their second baseman, Nico Horner, would go three for four with two runs on the day. With this win, the Chicago Cubs are now 21 and 20. That is the second best record in the National League Central as they now trail the St. Louis Cardinals by two and a half games in the division. And with this loss, the Washington Nationals are now 16 and 22. That is the worst record in the National League East as they now trail the New York Mets by five games in the division. Uh, Just to give a sense of where they sit. Jumping out to Minneapolis, the Minnesota Twins hosted the Chicago White Sox, and the Twins were able to pull off a 5-4 to four win after coming back from being down 4 to nothing after three innings. For the Chicago White Sox in this matchup, the start went to Lance Lynn. He allowed two earned runs and six innings pitches. He struck out two. The blown save and the loss would go to their second relief pitcher, Aaron Bummer. 
that's a bit, his last name is a bummer. Not messing with you, but he would allow three earned runs in one inning pitches. He struck out two as he would as he, this would be his fourth blown save of the season. And with his loss, he is now zero and two as a relief pitcher for the White Sox. In their batting lineup, their designated hitter Yermi Mercedes would go two for four on the day. And then, no, he would be the only player on the team with more than one hit. For the Minnesota Twins, however, the start would end up going to Bailey Ober. Ober would allow four earned runs and four innings pitched in, as he struck out four batters on the day in what would be his first start of the season. And the win would go to the Twins relief pitcher, who in this matchup was Taylor Rogers. Rogers would allow no earned runs in one inning pitch as he struck out two. With this win, he is one and two as a relief pitcher on this team. And then their first baseman, Miguel Sano, would end up going three for four with four RBIs and three runs as he hit three home runs yesterday. His fourth, his fifth, and his sixth home run of the season yesterday. He was the only Twins player with more than one hit, and he was raking it in virtually yesterday. Uh, with this win, the Minnesota Twins are now 14-26. and 26. That is the worst record in the American League Central as they now trail the Chicago White Sox by 10 and a half games in the division. With this loss, the Chicago White Sox are 25-16. and 16. Win percentage-wise, they have the best record in the American League and they have the the second or they have the second best record in the entire major leagues just to give a sense of where they are as they currently sit two and a half games ahead of the cleveland indians in the in the american league central jumping out to st louis the st louis cardinals hosted the pittsburgh pirates and the and the cardinals were able to beat the pirates five to two after scoring all five of their runs in the first three innings for the Pirates, the start and the loss will go to JT Brubaker. He allowed five earned runs and 5.2 innings pitches. He struck out three. With this loss, Brubaker is now 3-3 three and three as the starting pitcher for the Pirates. Their shortstop, who in this matchup was Kevin Newman, would go 2-4 for four on the day. And then their right fielder, Gregor Polanco, would end up going 2 for... Gregory Polanco would go 2-3 for three with an RBI on the day. For the St. Louis Cardinals in this matchup, the start and the win would go to John Gant. He allowed two earned runs and 5.1 innings pitch as he struck out three. With this win, he is now 3-3 three and three as a starting pitcher for the Cardinals. And the save, of course, would be given to Alex Reyes. Reyes would allow no earned runs in one inning pitch, and this would be his 12th save of the season. Their second baseman, Tommy Edmond, would go 3-5 for five with two RBIs. Their right fielder, Dylan Carlson, would go 2-4 for four with a run. Their elite third baseman, Nolan Arenado, would end up going 2-3 for three with two RBIs and two runs. He had his 10th home run of the season. Their future Hall of Fame catcher, Yadier Molina, would go 2-4 for four on the day. And then their shortstop, um, Edmundo Sosa, would end up going 2-4 for four with an RBI and a run. With this win, the St. Louis Cardinals are now 24-18. and 18. That is the best record in the National League Central as they currently sit two and a half games ahead of the second place Chicago Cubs. And with this loss, the Pittsburgh Pirates are now 17-24. and 24. That is the worst record in the National League Central as they now trail the St. Louis Cardinals by six and a half games in the division. Uh, jumping out to Dallas, the Dallas or blah, 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 blah. the Texas Rangers hosted the New York Yankees, and the Yankees were able to beat the Rangers seven to four after scoring five of them in the fourth inning alone. For the Texas Rangers, the start and the loss will go to Mike Fultonevich, the former National League All Star, as he allowed five earned runs and three point two innings pitched. He struck out one on the day. With this loss, Fultonevich is now one and four as a starting pitcher for the Rangers. Their second baseman, Nick Solak, will go two for four with two RBIs and two runs. He had his eighth home run of the season and he was, as he was the only Texas Rangers player with more than one hit on the day. And for the Yankees, the start will go to Jamison Tyon. Tyon would allow four earned runs and 4.1 innings pitch as he struck out three on the day. The win would go to the Yankees' first relief pitcher, Wandy Peralta. Wandy Peralta would allow no earned runs and one inning pitch as he struck out one. With this win, Peralta is now 3-1 and one as a relief pitcher this season. And picking up the save, striking out all three batters in the inning that he played, in the inning that he pitched, our role as Chapman picked up his 10th save this season, like I said. In their batting lineup, their elite third baseman, DJ LeMay, he would go 1-4 for four with three RBIs on the day. Uh, their elite designated hitter Aaron Judge would go two for five with a run for with with a run. Their second baseman Rooney Odor would go two for five, and then their left fielder Miguel Andujar would go two for four with an RBI and two runs. Last but not least, their first baseman Mike Ford would end up going two for three with a run. With this win, the New York Yankees are now twenty three and nineteen. That is the fourth best record in the American League East. They now trail the Boston Red Sox by a game and a half in the division. With this loss, the Texas Rangers are now 19-25. and 25. 
That is the worst record in the, in the American League West as they now trail the Oakland Athletics by seven and a half games in the division. Jumping out to Kansas City, the Kansas City Royals hosted the Milwaukee Brewers as the Royals were able to beat the Brewers two to nothing as the game was scoreless up until the eighth inning, up until um, a couple of crazy plays, but the, nonetheless, the Royals picked up their 19th win of the season. For the Milwaukee Brewers, the start and the loss will go to Brandon Woodruff. Woodruff would allow one earned run in two of the, he would allow both runs, but one of them was earned in 7.2 innings pitch as he struck out four on the day. With this loss, Woodruff is now two and two as a starting pitcher for the Brewers this season. As nobody on the team was able to log more than one hit, they're only held to three hits all day. And that a lot of that can be attributed to their to the Kansas City starting pitcher, Shane Bubich, who would allow no earned runs in six innings pitches. He struck out four. The win would go to their third relief pitcher, Jake Brents. Brents would allow no earned runs in point one inning pitched, and with this win, he is now one and zero as a relief pitcher. And the start or the save would end up going to their closer, um, Stamont. Stamont would allow no earned runs in one inning pitch as he struck out two on the day. Um, good out. Uh, Josh Stamont, like I said, he has four saves on the season. The only player on the Kansas City Royals who had more than one hit was their third baseman. And that was Kelvin Gutierrez. Kelvin Gutierrez would go two for three. And with this win, the Kansas City Royals are now 19 and 22. That is the third best record in the American League Central as they now trail the Chicago White Sox by six games in the division. With this loss, the Milwaukee Brewers are currently 21 and 21. That is the third best record in the National League Central as they now sit three games behind the St. Louis Cardinals at the moment. Jumping out to Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Angels hosted the Cleveland Indians, and the Indians were able to beat the Angels 6-5 to five after scoring five of their runs in the first inning. Uh, for the Los Angeles Angels in this loss, the start would go to Andrew Heaney as he allowed four earned runs in three innings pitch, striking out one. The loss would go to their second relief pitcher, Alex Claudio. Claudio would allow no earned run or one earned run in one inning pitch as he struck out one. With this loss, Claudio is now 0-1 as a relief pitcher this season. For the Angels, their designated hitter Shohei Otani would go two for three with an RBI and two runs as he had his MLB leading 14th home run of the season yesterday. Their left fielder Justin Upton would be the only other player with more with more than one hit for the Angels as he went two for four with three RBIs and a run as he had his eighth home run of the season yesterday. For the Cleveland Indians, the start and the win went to Zach Plezak. Plezak would allow five earned runs and seven innings pitches. He struck out four. With this win, he is now 4-3 and three on the season. And the save would go to James Karinchak, who would allow no earned runs in one inning pitches. He struck out one. His ERA is currently .49 at the moment. And then looking in the batting lineup, there is shortstop Ahmed Rosario would go 2-5 for five with a run on the day. And the only other player with more than one hit was their right fielder, Josh Naylor, as he went 2-4 for four with an RBI and a run. Additionally, their elite third baseman, Jose Ramirez, would go 1-3 for three with two RBIs and a run as he had his 12th home run of the season yesterday. With this win, the Cleveland Indians are now 22-18. and 18. That is currently the second best record in the American League Central as they now trail the Chicago White Sox by two and a half games in the division. And with this loss, the Los Angeles Angels are now 18-23. and 23. That is the fourth best record in the American League West as they now sit seven games behind the Oakland Athletics uh, in the West Division. Jumping, speaking of the Oakland Athletics, the Athletics host the Houston Astros yesterday and were able to pull up a six to five comeback win uh, to get a to get their twenty six of the year for the Houston Astros. Oh, but first, the A's actually ended this game off of a Ramon Laureano walk off sacrifice fly. So of course that's how the game ended. Looking at how Houston fared, the start would go to Carlo or Christian Javier. Christian Javier would go on to allow three earned runs and seven in, or six innings pitches. He struck out nine on the day. And the loss would go to their closer, Brian Abreu. Abreu would allow one earned run and one inning pitch as he was unable to strike out a batter. With this loss, he is now two and two as the closer for the Astros. In their batting lineup, their elite second baseman, Jose Altuve, would go two for five with a run. Their left fielder, Michael Brantley, would go two for five with an RBI and a run. Their elite third baseman, Alex Bregman, would go two for four with a run on the day. Uh, their right fielder, Kyle Tucker, would go two for four with an RBI and a run as he hit his 10th home run of the season. And then their center fielder, Miles Straw, would go two for four on the day as the Astros had 13 hits as a, as a team. For the Oakland Athletics, the win or the start went to Sean Manea, who allowed three earned runs and six innings pitches. He struck out three. The win will go to their closer, who in this matchup was Yusimero Petit. Petit would allow no earned runs and one inning pitches. He struck out two. 
With this win, he is now 5-0 and as a relief pitcher for Oakland. And then their center fielder, Ramon Loriano, will go 2-for-3 three with three RBIs and three runs as he hit two home runs, and he also hit the sacrifice fly. So, of course, great game for him as he now has 10 home runs on the season. And then their elite third baseman, Matt Chapman, was the only other player with more than one hit as he went 2-for-4 yesterday. With this win, the Oakland Athletics are now 26-17. and 17. That is currently the best record in the American League West and the second best record in the American League win percentage-wise. And they currently sit a game and a half ahead of the second place Astros, just to give a sense of where the Astros sit as well. Jumping out to Dodger Stadium, the defending champs, Los Angeles Dodgers, hosted the Arizona Diamondbacks. And in this matchup, the Dodgers will beat the Diamondbacks 9-1 to after scoring six in the seventh and eighth inning combined. For the Arizona Diamondbacks in this matchup, the start and the loss will go to Corbin Martin. Martin would allow three earned runs and five innings pitches. He struck out six. With this loss, he is now 0-1 as a starting pitcher on the season as nobody on the team finished with more than one hit as they were held to three hits in total. A lot of that can be attributed to the Los Angeles Dodgers starting pitcher Julio Urias. He would allow one earned run in 6.2 innings pitch as he struck out eight on the day. With this win, Urias is now 6-1 and one as a starting pitcher this year. Uh, and then in their batting lineup, their elite center fielder, Mookie Betts, would go two for four with an RBI and two runs as he had his fifth home run of the season yesterday. Their third baseman, Chris Taylor, would go two for four with two RBIs and two runs as he had his fifth home run of the season. Their catcher, Will Smith, would go two for four with an RBI and a run. And their shortstop, Gavin Lux, who's starting to heat up, he went two for four with four RBIs and a run as he had his second home run of the season. With this win, the Los Angeles Dodgers are now 24 and 18. That is currently the third best record in the National League West as they sit two games behind the San Francisco Giants uh, in the division. And with this loss, the Arizona Diamondbacks are now 18 and 25. That is the fourth best record in the National League West as they now trail the San Francisco Giants by eight and a half games in the division just to show where they are. Jumping out to San Diego, the Padres hosted the Colorado Rockies and the Padres were able to beat the Rockies two to one after scoring on a wild pitch in the 10th in order to pick up their 26th win of the season, but somehow they're still not winning their division. For the Colorado Rockies, the start would end up going to Austin Gomber. He allowed one earned run and six innings pitches. He struck out seven. The loss would go to their relief pitcher, um, Daniel Bard. Bard would allow no earned runs, but one run total and 1.1 innings pitches. He struck out two. With this loss, he is now one and three as a relief pitcher. And then in their batting lineup, their first baseman, C.J. Crone, would end up going three for four on the day with a run. And the only other player with more than one hit was their third baseman, Josh Fuentes, who went two for four with an RBI. For the San Diego Padres, the start went to their elite starting pitcher, Blake Snell. Snell would allow one earned run in six innings pitch as the former American League Cy Young winner struck out 11 batters last night. And the win would end up going to their relief pitcher, Pierce Johnson. Johnson would allow no earned runs in one inning pitch as he struck out all three of the batters that he had to get out. He walked one, but he had to eat all of his outs were strikeouts. With this win, he's now one and one as a relief pitcher this year. The only player for the Padres that had more than one hit was their second baseman, Jake Cronenworth, as he went three for four on the day. Uh, with this win, the San Diego Padres are now 26 and 17. That is the second best record in the National League West as they now trail the San Francisco Giants by half a game in the division. And with this loss, the Colorado Rockies are now 15 and 28. That is the worst record in the National League West as they now trail the San Francisco Giants by 11 and a half games in the division. And then jumping out to Seattle, the Seattle Mariners hosted the Detroit Tigers as the Tigers were able to beat the Mariners five to nothing uh, to get their 16th win of the season. And of course, to record their first no hitter since 2011, I believe by GOAT starting pitcher Justin Verlander, but don't completely take my word for that one. For the Seattle Mariners, the start and the loss went to Justin Dunn. Uh, Justin Dunn would allow two earned runs and 5.2 innings pitches as he pitched as he struck out nine on the day. With this loss, Justin Dunn is now 1-2 and two as a starting pitcher for Seattle, and nobody on the Mariners is able to log a hit, and that can be registered to Spencer Turnbull. Uh, Spencer Turnbull, the starting pitcher for the Detroit Tigers, would allow no earned runs in nine innings pitches. He struck out nine batters. Uh, he, w- w- with this win, he is now 3-2 and two on the season, and he now picked up his first career ever no hitter uh their second baseman jonathan scope would go two for five with an rbi and then their third baseman honda jaime condolario would go two for four with two rbis and two runs as he had his fourth home run of the season also their shortstop harold castro would go three for four with a run going back to the no hitter 
Surprisingly, I saw something yesterday on ESPN saying that Jason Tatum has only scored 50 points three times in his career, and on two of those nights, a no-hitter was thrown. So, you know, crazy fact. With this win, the Detroit Tigers are now 16-26. and 26. Uh, That is currently the second worst record or the fourth best in the American League Central as they currently sit nine and a half games behind the Chicago White Sox in the division. With this loss, the Seattle Mariners are now 21 and 22. That is the third best record in the American League West as they now trail the Oakland Athletics by five games in the division. That is what the MLB is currently looking like following yesterday's matchups. But looking out to what's going on today, of course, today is Wednesday as teams are still playing as tomorrow's the travel day. But of course, starting from the earlier games and moving on down the list at 110, Matt Shoemaker and the Minnesota Twins are going to host Lucas Hialito and the Chicago White Sox on ESPN Plus at 410. Uh, Joe Musgrove and the San Diego Padres are going to host Chichi Gonzalez and the Colorado Rockies at 410. At 640, Wade Miley and the Cincinnati Reds are going to host Kevin Gosman and the San Francisco Giants. At 705, Zach Eflin and the Philadelphia Phillies are going to host Trevor Rogers and the Miami Marlins. At the same time, John Means and the Baltimore Orioles are going to host Ryan Yarbrough and the Tampa Bay Rays. John Means has a no-hitter this season, and I mean, he can flex that for the rest of the year, and I'm probably going to mention it too. <laughs> At 720, Charlie Morton and the Atlanta Braves are going to host David Peterson and the New York Mets. At 737, Ross Stripling and the Toronto Blue Jays are going to face off against Garrett Richards and the Boston Red Sox. At 740, Jake Arrieta and the Chicago Cubs are going to face off against the Washington Nationals, led by their, go- or led by their goaded starting pitcher, Max Scherzer. At 7.45, Jack, 7-0 Jack Flaherty and the St. Louis Cardinals are going to host Trevor Cahill and the Pittsburgh Pirates, Flaherty being, their elite starting, being the Cardinals' elite starting pitcher. At 8.05, the Texas Rangers are going to host the New York Yankees, and the Yankees are being led by their elite starting pitcher, Corey Kluber, two-time American Cy Young winner, American League Cy Young winner. At 8.10, Brad Keller and the Kansas City Royals are going to host Corbin Burns and the Milwaukee Brewers. At 9.40, Frankie Montaz and the Oakland A's are going to host Zach Grinke and the Houston Astros. At 10.10, uh, the Los Angeles Dodgers, the defending champs, led by their go to starting pitcher Clayton Kershaw, are going to host Merrill Kelly and the Arizona Diamondbacks. And last but not least, at the same time, 0-1 Logan Gilbert and the Seattle Mariners are going to face off against uh, Tariq Skubal and the Detroit Tigers. Um, that that game is going to be uh, going on as well. With all that going on in the MLB, taking a look at what's going on outside of the U.S., taking a quick look at Premier League soccer, because I believe... The Premier League was the only league that played yesterday because now, or as they before yesterday, they every team had two games left. So of course they were able to get those knocked out this week. Starting off at Manchester United, Manchester United was able to draw with Fulham one to one. Edison Cavani scored in the fifteenth minute off of a stunner in front of the fans for the first time with this draw they currently sit four points ahead of chelsea and 12 behind man city they have officially secured the second best record in the premier league no matter what happens in the final in the final collection of games at brighton and hub albion they were able to beat manchester city three to two manchester city played with eight players for 80 minutes of the game as joao Cancelo got a red card 10 minutes in uh, and with this loss, Manchester City still sits on top of the Premier League as they sit 12 points ahead of second place Manchester United in the table. Uh, Chelsea was able to beat Leicester City at home off of a penalty kick from Jorginho. To, that would be the difference in Rudiger would score in the 47th minute. With this win, Chelsea now holds the third best record in the Premier League. With one more game left, they have officially clinched a spot in next year's Champions League title race. With this well, no, they technically have, and they no, they technically have not actually, but Leicester City now sits fourth in the Premier League table as they sit three points ahead of Liverpool, who has yet to play their game today. With a win for Liverpool, Liverpool could eventually pass Leicester City, but as of right now, Leicester City is holding on to that fourth spot in the Premier League with one more game left, and then looking out to what's going to go on today. Uh, in the Premier League, Tottenham Hotspur will face Aston Villa at one o'clock. Tottenham currently holds the sixth best record in the table as they are actually tied with West Ham. A win could actually do a lot for them because this is act- this is a, a must win for them, and I don't think they can clinch 
Champions League anymore. I'm not completely sure. And then jumping out to Burnley. Burnley will host Liverpool as Liverpool currently holds the fifth best record. A win here could possibly put Liverpool past Leicester City and knock Leicester City out of Champions League for the time being. But of course, it has to happen first. And then in the Italian Coppa Italia, it'll be a match between Atalanta versus Juventus as this is the final Um, This will be a very, no, this is a a, a well, this is a match that a lot of people are looking forward to. Atalanta actually holds a better record than Juventus in the Serie A this year. Atalanta is holding the second best record and Juventus is still trying to fight for a Champions League spot. They hold the fifth best record in in Serie A at the moment. And then in the French Coupe de France final, AS Monaco will face off against PSG, as these are two of France's top teams in Liga already. Uh, Monaco holding the third best record, PSG holding the second, just to give a sense of where both these teams sit. So, of course, this will be a highly anticipated matchup in France. And with that said, there's, that's virtually everything going on for today, Wednesday, May 19th, 2021, out here in this quarantine. And once all of today's matchups are finished and complete, I will come back tomorrow on Thursday, May 20th, 2021, for another installment of The Elite. And, and until then, I want to thank you all once again for listening to this piece. I hope all is well. Um, today is Wednesday, May 19th, 2021. My name is James Sims, and this is The Elite. Uh, I want to thank you all for listening to my piece. I hope all is well and peace out. I'll catch you tomorrow.